Hello everyone, it's my partner Liu Jingfeng, and I can we are going to talk about the pneumonia detection and SAR implementations in this presentation. Here is the overview of our presentation. First, talking about the introductions. In the year 2020, these people are suffering from COVID-19. Although there are a lot of doctors in the world, it is still not enough to, to diagnose a large number of patients. In order to help doctors to diagnose it quickly, so we build a convolutional network models to help doctors finish this classification test. Moreover, it is a medical issue, so we need to do some SAI to convince doc doctors and patients to use this model. I think that is scientific and explainable. And here is our data set, and the URL is shown here. Uh, we find out that it's so hard for people without any knowledge about it to finish the classifications. We think that it also needs the doctor to look at it very carefully to give the correct results. There are two examples for different label data shown for you here. And after doing visualizations of the data sets, we can find out the data set is imbalanced. Using this imbalanced data sets directly, it may make the model cannot learn a lot of features about the normal ones and tend to predict pneumonia. So we need to do some data processing. Um, to mitigate or avoid the impacts of the imbalanced data sets in this project, we need to use data augmentations to expand our data set artificial weights. Here is the uh, detailed transformation we did for data augmentations in our project. And we also do some data normalizations and resize. According to the description of the data sets, we know that the data is the X-ray image, which may affect by the illuminations. So we perform a grayscale normalization to mitigate or avoid the effect of the illuminations difference. Besides, we think this normalization can also make the CNN model converge faster. Then we resize data into a suitable size for the machine learning. And talking about the model descriptions and experience. Uh, in this project, we are solving an image classification classification problem. So we decided to construct a CNN model to finish our predictions of whether the patient has pneumonia or not by looking at the evidence of the X-ray image. Uh, here are two main features of CNNs. Um, CNN is consists of, of three kinds of layers, which is convolution layers, pooling layer, fully, fully connected layers, and here is the uh, functions. We also use batch normalization and dropouts in our proposed model. And um, uh, usually it's in deep CNN model, it will uh, occur internal covariance shift problems. And these problems will cause uh, three main bad influence, which is shown here. In order to avoid these uh, problems, uh, we need to use batch normalization to fix this. And here is the uh, formula of the batch, batch normalizations. And in the deep CNN network, there is a lot of parameters in the model which will easily lead to the overfitting problems in order to avoid the overfittings, especially for the fully connected layer parts, because the pooling layers can somehow prevent overfittings in the convolutional layers. We need to add some drop up. Uh, finally, we get our proposed model structures here. Uh, before experience, we need to set up the baseline models. Uh, the baseline model is just the proposed models. And here is the setting of the baseline models. And we also do some visualization of the training process, which is shown here. As you can see here, the model covers so fast. And these baseline models uh, have 88% uh, accuracy and 0 0.34 loss. Uh, we also do some visualization of the test results. We can find out the model is suffering from the overfitting problems and it tends to classify an instant as a, a pneumonia here. And uh, we start doing some control variable experiments in order to improve our proposed model um, uh, performance. Uh, first is about the data normalizations. We can find out the, our assumption about the data normalizations uh, do not work, the grayscale normalizations. There are two possible reasons. First, the data set is high quality enough and the second is that our assumption uh, is wrong in this task. Uh, then we also do some experiment about average poolings uh, and uh, mass poolings. The baseline model uses mass poolings. Uh, according to the, to the results here, we can find out the average pooling performance better. Uh, we think there is a possible reason, which is feature extraction error problems. The error of feature extraction mainly comes from two aspects, which is shown here. And generally, average pooling can reduce the first type of errors and retain more background information of the image. And mass pooling can reduce the second type of error and retain more textual information. In this specific task, it is maybe more focused on the background information instead of the textual information. Data is the real image, and we do a grayscale normalization, which may lose more information by using mass pooling instead of average pooling. Here is one of the example here. Easy to understand example. And we also do experiments about the batch normalizations. Uh, as 
we can see the result here. Uh, we can find out there is not a huge difference. So the possible reasons we think is that our proposed model is not deep enough or a bit influenced by internal co shifting. Uh, then we also test the dropouts. We remove the dropout. You can see the result here. Um, the accuracy is reduced a lot. And as you can see here, the confusion matrix, we can find out the models are suffering from the overfitting problems, which is much worse than the baseline model. So uh, we think that it is so necessary to pre uh, perform job parts in our models to avoid or mitigate the effect of the overfitting issue. And we also try different optimizers. Uh, we use Omnis Pro and NA to do two more training. According to the results, to our surprise, we find out Omnis Pro gives the best performance among the three optimizers. The only difference between them is that Adam and NA Downs are based on the momentum effort, but Omnis is not. So we think the optimizer based on the momentum effort is not good in this test. Moreover, according to the materials online about the double gun, we find out the double gun essay also mentions such situations. We think, uh, I think finding out the true reason behind this situation needs to do more experiments in the future. When I search online about the disadvantage of the optimizer based on the momentum effort, uh, I find nothing about it. I think it's worth to discover it in the future work to create a better performance optimizer, maybe. Uh, we also try some different uh, learning rates. We can find out smaller learning rates can have a better performance, but you need to let the model converge more slower. Uh, as you can see the result here, the performance cannot be affected by the learning rates much. So we think our baseline learning rate is great enough. And we also do some experiments about apples. We can find that after the model is uh, converged, the extra apples, uh, the more extra apple you have, the performance will be worse. And because uh, it will lead to overfitting problems, in order to solve these problems, uh, we think we can use early stopping method to stop chaining when the model is converged. After this experiment, we have a uh, best models. We, uh, the overall structure is shown here. And the precision of it is 93.1% and the loss is 0 0.186. Uh, it makes a great improvement than the proposed one. We also do some visualization of the results, which is shown in here. And comparing with the proposed model, the overfitting problem is large mitigated. But according to the incorrect example here, we can find out there are still some low quality data in the data set, which makes the performance hard to improve more. Moreover, the training data set only contains about 5,000 instances, which is not huge enough. It is also one of the limitations of performance improvement. Using a deeper model maybe can also improve the performance since our model is not deep enough, but we do not think using a deeper model is a good choice if the data set is not large enough. If we use a deeper model means that there are more parameters and it is easy, easier to suffer from the overfitting problem. Also, we use ResNet and DanceNet to train the model by using transfer learning in order to make comparison of our model performance. We can find out the best performance of them is around 90%, as you can see here. Uh, maybe it can be a little bit higher by changing the hyperparameters. It means that we did a good job at least in this, this in this specific task. We can have a similar or better performance than the advanced model nowadays. Then my partner will introduce SAI part to you. And in my part, I will give you some explanation of XAI implementation on TensorFlow version 2 with these three methods. Uh, firstly, is the guided back backpropagation. To solve this problem, we need to apply our own uh, custom gradient function here. Uh, for the forward part, we use the normal value function, but for the backpropagation part, we, we use our customized value gradient. And uh, to solve the uh, grade, grade cam programming implementation, you can notice uh, there are two parts of the grade cam. Uh, the first part is the weight of the feature maps, and another part is the feature maps. We can notice they, are, they have some common things. Uh, the feature maps is the output of the last convolution layer, and the weight uh, is the uh, back propagation from the uh, output layer to the last convolution layer. So uh, we have the idea to uh, divide our original part into two parts. The first part is the input layer to the master convolution layer. Another part is the master convolution layer to the output layer. And for the uh, using uh, of our XAI, we just uh, feed the uh, test image from the input to the master convolution layer. We will get the feature maps. And then we just feed the feature maps into the uh, remain uh, layers, the fully connected layers, to get the output. Uh, this is the uh, implementation to divide our model. We can see firstly we divide from input layer to the last convolution layer. 
and then we just divide the, the remaining 40 connection layers in, into the another model here called this. Uh, this is a summary of the uh, divided model. Uh, we use the convo to D4 as the separator to separate our original model into two parts here. Uh, after divide our model into two parts, we need to uh, apply the customer guided ReLU uh, to our model so that our model can have ReLU gradient. Firstly, we just uh, uh, get all layers of our new model, and then we just uh, change the activation of all layers from the a ReLU function to our customized guided ReLU function. And uh, here is the calculation of the uh, guided back propagation and the grid cam. Firstly, we need to feed our uh, test data into our model. Uh, we firstly convert our uh, input image into tensor and we watch the tensor because uh, we need to calculate the uh, gradient from the input layer later. And uh, then we just feed the uh, input tensor uh, to the first model, and then we will get the output of the last convolution layer, which is the fission maps. We watch the last convolution layer so that the model can back propagation to the last convolution layer to calculate the weights of the fission maps. And the remaining part is the uh, prediction part uh, of our model, the output uh, part of our model. And then is the uh, back propagation part. Uh, firstly, we need to uh, do the uh, grade, uh, guided uh, grade uh, from the uh, last layer, uh, the output layer to the input layer, we will get the uh, guided back propagation. And then we uh, from do the back propagation from the last layer, the output layer, to the last convolutional layer, we will get the weights of, of, of all the maps, feature maps. And then we just uh, do the, uh, here, we just do the global average pooling and to the weights, and we just uh, and times to the fission maps and uh, sum them up to get the grid cam. After we get the uh, grid cam and the guided back propagation, we can easily get the uh, guided grid cam uh, by do the multiplic multiplication among them, between them. Firstly, but one thing we need to do is upsampling. The upsampling is very, is very simple. We just uh, uh, apply the interpolation into the grid cam. And then we do the multiplication of these two parts. We will get the uh, guided grid cam. And uh, this is the experiment and the results. Uh, our model is focused on to uh, predict the pneumonia, but we can find our model sometimes will focus on some abnormal things. The first thing is the line here. The our model sh uh, shouldn't focus on this. Thing. And we can notice uh, our model will also focus on some uh, abnormal things like the human uh, notation. The uh, word R here. We also find that the, our model sometimes focus on the uh, uh, circle sticky on the image. Uh, we see the axis R here. And uh, after uh, thousands of uh, uh, experiments, we find all the uh, SAI shows our model to the too much attention on the bone part. Um, because our model is focused on to pre predict the uh, pneumonia, it should focus on most focus on the long part, but our model seems to uh, focus on the too much attention to the long part, which will uh, uh, impact on our model's accuracy to do the prediction. So, in conclusion, uh, after the evaluation of XAI, we found some limitations. Uh, firstly, our model put too much attention on the long part, and then our model uh, will focus on many noisy like the uh, uh, circle sticky and the line in the uh, original image and the data set of uh, our model is too small. We only have about uh, 5,000 uh, images to train our model. So we can do this to solve the limitations in the future. Uh, firstly, we can do the uh, data pre-processing to remove the uh, noisy uh, from the original image. And we can try the denoising autoencoder to uh, learn the uh, uh, latent re representation of the input and to remove the noisy. And then we need to, we have to collect more data to train our model to uh, let our model to learn more things. In conclusion, our model achieved a relatively high accuracy at 93.1% and we impre implement XAI to evaluate our model. And then we find some drawbacks and limitations after the evaluation. And uh, we find some solutions we can do in the future and we believe we can do better in the future. This is our reference. And uh, because of the limitation of time, we don't have too much 
uh, time to uh, see all the details of our project. If you are interested in our project, you can see our report. Thank you for listening.